This is our ground penetrating radar unit. Uh, we call our Matilda. It basically uh, sends a radar pulse into the ground and gives us a picture or at least an impression of what's below the surface. When it comes to preserving the past, technology can offer a glimpse into unearthing pieces of Florida history. What we're doing right now is just trying to bring the ground penetrating radar over to those markers to make sure we've included all of the area that could have been part of the cemetery. In an effort to document and designate the historic cemetery at the Dozier School for Boys in Mariana, Florida, forensic anthropologist Aaron Kimmerly is leading a team of researchers from the University of South Florida through meticulous steps, figuring out where exactly below the surface the graves are located. The 111-year-old school, once called the Florida Industrial School for Boys, has a storied past. The mystery that surrounds the treatment of the children incarcerated there may never be solved. The boys that died in state custody that were not returned to their families were buried here in an area on Boot Hill. School ledgers and state records indicate 84 boys died at the school between 1911 and 1973. Only 31 crosses are in the cemetery. I think it is uh, like a puzzle. I think that's a good analogy. Maybe a puzzle turned backwards so that you don't have color even, you just have shape. If you think about the history in the context of the cemetery, not only were the graves never marked, but there wasn't ever a burial plot map or any specific records about who was buried there and where they were buried. Since receiving permission from the Department of Environmental Protection in January to research and designate the historic site, the team has made several trips north to study archive photos, witness testimony, GPR analysis, and site samples to get a better picture about what lies beneath. We were trying to find the limits of the cemetery, and we were able to find the western and eastern limits and the southern limits. The real problem became in the northern limit of the cemetery that's going in this direction toward these trees. These oak trees and, and cedar trees were used as boundary markers for many of the features on the school. So the assumption was that these are boundary markers that perhaps the cemetery extended over to this boundary. The cemetery was marked by some Boy Scouts and cleaned up many years ago. They had a, a fairly good location of the final portion of the cemetery when it was used. But they are not exact and may be misplaced based on the historical records and research that the USF team has gathered so far. The fact that the woods have grown up all around it um, can provide you know, additional challenges because that boundary may actually extend beyond um, what is in recent memory. The team from USF worked to clear the location of small trees and brush for the ground penetrating radar to run smooth over the area surrounding the old oak tree. Stories over the years reference grave sites at the base of the giant tree. The collaborative effort includes anthropology, archaeology, and biology techniques and may help shed some light on a story that has remained in darkness for decades. We have the brick cement. Every cement block and old can is documented and marked. So we're gonna go 14. The team carefully measures, marks, and grids out a 14 by 20 meter perimeter to guide the GPR. We collect data, in this particular case, every 50 centimeters. Uh, we're looking for graves out here, so those are fairly large objects, fairly easy to find, so every 50 centimeters seems appropriate. In February, the last time the USF team was at the site, ground penetrating radar recognized several areas of interest, or anomalies, that anthropologists are working to clarify. But the area we were really interested in was over here because all the anomalies kept going in that direction. All areas in question are marked with flags. USF anthropologists also use a method known as ground truthing. They dig one half meter trenches vertically across the areas where there is density in the ground. Florida soil has distributions of dirt over layers of clay. USF student anthropologists carefully lift the earth in order to see what secrets the ground holds. Areas on the side of the trench where the soil and clay are mixed exhibit signs of previous digging. This indicates a grave shaft. Another tool in marking the timeline at the cemetery is tree dating. Biologists from USF extract core samples of the cedar trees that surround the site to determine when they were planted and where the perimeter of the cemetery might be. The team will continue to research the site. This summer, Kimmerly and the USF anthropology team will sift through the data collected and GPR software will clarify the anomalies. And they can be anything from the roots from these trees to graves to pieces of metal to pieces of concrete. 
to almost anything can be an anomaly. And it's up to the, uh, the analyst, once the data is collected, to then identify and tease out from those data what that really means. Once that's accomplished, what are the next steps then? What, what is it that the family wants to happen? What, is the, what does the community want to happen? Um, how should they be marked? How should they be commemorated? Those are very important questions, not something that we can answer or that I can answer right now. Um, it's, and it's ultimately, I think, up to those families. The pieces of the historical puzzle are starting to fit together. For USF News, I'm Katie Hennig.